It's a tough act to follow. Um, All right, all right. If you have one, open up your Bibles to Matthew chapter 13. Uh, today I want to talk about the topic of listening, and by that I mean the kind of listening where you pay attention to someone with your whole heart and your whole being. And uh, Jesus is very keen on this idea, and he knows that most of us are terrible listeners. I know for me personally, I have a really bad habit of uh, zoning out when someone's talking to me, and it happens a lot. And you might think, well, that, sure, I do that too, but I also have a really bad habit of pretending I'm not zoned out when someone's talking to me. So that's not very good either. But Jesus knows this, and he has a very specific method of communication that he uses to combat this, and it's parables. And so today I'm going to dig into one specific parable, and it's actually the one that he used to describe his reason for parables. So it's Matthew 13, verse 3. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell in rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. And still other seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop, 160 or 30 times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. So let's just get this straight. Jesus has a great opportunity in front of him to speak clearly in front of all kinds of people, fishermen, merchants, Pharisees, men, women, and children, people who loved him, people who hated him, wanted him dead even. And this is what he decides to say, a vague story about seeds and soils and a farmer. What's going on? Why would he choose to be purposely mysterious? And so here we come to the reason for parables. And that is they're designed to activate a response in the listener. For those who are open-minded, for those who are willing to hear a, a voice in their life other than their own, they'll view these strange little stories as an opportunity to uh, think about themselves and the world and God in a deeper way. But unfortunately, not everyone uh, is able to drop their own preconceived notions, and so they're unable to hear properly. And Jesus meant for this parable to help us find ourselves in one of these four categories. So what I'll do is I'll read through the next section, and as I go, just prayerfully consider and listen closely, try to figure out which category you fit into. And if you do find yourself in one of these categories, it doesn't mean you're trapped there. It just means you may need to reevaluate how you're listening. Going down to verse 19, when anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in, in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. So this is the person least likely to even hear what I'm saying now. It's likely if you're in this position, you wouldn't even care. <laughs> but maybe you do find yourself in this position, you do care, in which case, do you have ears? Yeah. If you're hearing condemnation in your heart, you should know that is not the voice of Jesus Christ. Yeah. If you believe that you can't change your sinful ways, you should know that is a lie from the enemy. The Bible says Jesus will not cast you away if you come to him. Soil number two. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. So this is referring to someone whose faith is visible on the outside, but not real on the in inside. And maybe this is you. Maybe you find yourself falling back in your own ways at the first sign of trouble or suffering or hardship. So the call here is to ro develop a robust inner life with Christ. Yeah. And maybe that's some of us. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. So here we're talking about competing values, ideas, and stories in our lives that affect how we live and the decisions we make. And these are things that we tend to prioritize over Jesus, though he may be one of those things. And he, sing, and he says, they're like thorns, and the seed won't last. Last soil. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop, yielding 100, 60, or 30 times what was sown. So when we give our lives to Jesus, and when, when we allow his voice and his teachings take the lead in our life, we'll begin to notice our lives begin to produce fruit all around us. And it's not, our, it's not the soil, it's not our hearts that produce the fruit. It is only by the seed of Jesus that we become more like him. And I just love what he says at the end of the parable. Whoever has ears, let them hear. So what he's saying is, no matter where you find yourself in one of these four categories, the response is to listen. The response is to listen. And no matter where you are, you can hear his voice. You can clean the soil of your heart. 
So as you move into the rest of this week, before anything, listen to Jesus, be with him, and strive to be like the good soil, producing fruit for the kingdom of God. Thank you.